Hello grade 10, so we're going to start off with the chemistry topic, matter and materials. So this is going to be basically an introduction video to matters and materials, classification of matter and properties of materials. Now, this is basically going to be a theory video. There's, I will also show you how we ask this in an exam. So stay tuned towards the end of the video, but also throughout the video, I give teacher tips and I'm going to show you the types of questions that you can expect in tests and in exams relating to the section. So let's jump right in. Right, let's jump right into the video, Matters and Materials, Classification of Matter. So behind me, you can see a whole b bunch of different types of matter. We'll go into what makes matter, matter. And the first thing that you need to know is that matter has mass, okay? You know, mass as in something measured in grams or kilograms. So matter has mass, okay? And matter occupies space, so it has a volume. Those are two very important things to note about matter, mass and volume. Properties of materials, this is also very important, listed in your ATPs, you need to know this. But before we look at properties of materials, I need to explain what the difference is between a substance and a material. So behind me, you can see that I've listed a substance as something that consists of one type of matter. So it has a constant composition, Distinct properties, so for example, salt or water or sugar. Materials are objects that are made of matter. We do things with materials, like for example, paper or wood or metal. These are materials. Slight, 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 slight difference, but we're going to be basically looking at properties of materials. Materials can have a lot of different properties. It depends on how you define them or how you look at them. But these are some of my different properties. You need to know these properties. So these can often be asked as definitions. You can be given a list where you have to choose the correct properties for the correct materials. Now, first property is strength. And strength is the ability to withstand an applied force. So if I apply a force to it, if it's strong, if it has a high strength, then it'll be able to withstand this. It won't break like iron or steel. Those are very strong materials. Then we've got thermal conductivity. I hope that you know when you see the word thermal that that means heat. Thermal is relating to heat. So you get a thermal conductor and a thermal insulator. So a thermal conductor is a material that allows heat to pass through it. A thermal insulator is a material that does not allow heat to pass through it. So for example, you can see on this picture over here, if you have a metal pot, so generally metals are good thermal conductors, you know you're not going to touch the metal handle with your hands because it's going to burn. That's because metals are good thermal conductors. They allow heat to pass through them. That's why you would use something with maybe a plastic handle or you would use a cloth to touch the pot. And that's because something like a cloth or plastic, they are thermal insulators. They do not allow heat to pass through them. So. Here we go, we've got some examples of thermal conductors. Metals are good thermal conductors. Then we've got non-conductors or insulators. They do not allow heat to pass through. There are some examples for you to learn and to know. Then we've got electrical conductivity. So we just spoke about thermal. Now we're speaking about electrical. So remember thermal was allowing heat to pass through. Elec electrical is allowing flow of charge. Or electricity to pass through. So an electrical conductor allows the flow of charge. An electrical insulator does not allow the flow of charge and you do get semiconductors. That means that under some circumstances they allow charge to flow through or pass through but not under others. Okay so some examples. Electrical conductors. Once again surprise surprise it's my metals. And that's why I use something like copper wires in circuits. So metals are good electrical conductors. And also a non-metal that is a good conductor of electricity is graphite, which is basically made from carbon. Okay, one type of substance that's made from carbon. Non-conductors of electricity. Plastic, ceramics, fiberglasses, and diamond. Now diamond's also made of carbon. Okay, graphite and diamond, both made of carbon. But graphite is a electrical conductor, diamond is not. And then we've got semiconductors, so semi-metals, silicon, and germanium. So under cer 
cer certain circumstances they will allow current to flow through them and under others they won't. Then we've got another property of material called brittleness. So brittle materials are hard, but they break easily or they crack easily, like glass, okay? Hard. Tap a piece of glass, it's hard, but it can crack. It is brittle. Then we've got malleability. So if something is malleable, it's you are able to hammer it or press it flat or into shape without it breaking or cracking. A lot of metals are malleable. So I'm sure you all know what aluminium is or tin foil. Um, it's made from aluminium. Okay, we use it to pre preserve our food. It's pressed into a flat thin sheet. Gold is very malleable, and that's why it makes a great um, material to be used for jewelry and things like that. We've got ductility. So ductile. If you are ductile, you have the ability to be able to be stretched into a long thin wire. Again, metals are highly ductile. Another property of materials that you need to know is magnetic versus non-magnetic. These are the elements, the periodic table of elements behind me. And certain elements, these three over here that are in light blue, iron, Fe, cobalt, Co, and nickel, Ni, those are what we call ferromagnetic elements. So they have magnetic properties and can be used as a magnet. Okay, Elements that have magnetic properties, there they are, they're listed over here. I said here that some alloys are also magnetic. So if you don't know what an alloy is, it's a mixture of different metals. So steel, for example, is an alloy. If you look at the periodic table, you're not going to find steel on there. It's not an element. It's a mixture of different types of metals, including iron. So some alloys are also magnetic. And we can actually combine some of these ferromagnetic elements with other stuff. And we use it in everyday items. So there we go. Magnetic versus non-magnetic. Another property of materials that you need to know is density. So density is mass per unit volume. Now, if someone says per, so the word per, it means divide. So we take our mass and we divide it by our volume. If you ever forget how to calculate density, think about the heart. Look at it. It's your mass. And over here, it's your volume. Mass divided by volume. So if you take a look at these three that different types of materials that I have over here, I've got foam, I've got diamond, I've got iron. In these scenarios, I've got one cubic centimeter of all of them, which means the volume is the same. So in one cubic centimeter of foam, that's the mass. In one cubic centimeter of diamond, that's the mass. In one cubic centimeter of iron, that's the mass. So you can see here that iron has the greatest mass per unit volume, which means it has the greatest density. I hope that makes sense. Right. Two other properties of materials that you need to know that we will be doing in the kinetic molecular theory coming up in this section of work, the melting point, we've got melting point over here, and we've got boiling point. So melting point is the temperature at which a solid becomes a liquid. Boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a substance is equal to the external atmospheric pressure. I will be going through these in a lot more detail in those kinetic molecular theory videos. So subscribe and watch those videos for more but this is basically a summary of all the different definitions to learn for properties of materials some of these we haven't gotten to yet so you'll see homogeneous and heterogeneous or homogeneous and heterogeneous we will get to those in videos to come we also have some more over here element compound pure substance that's coming in videos in the future so let me just move myself over here so you can see the definitions and as i mentioned in videos to come we will be looking at matter and how it can be divided into pure substances versus mixtures. So I will see you in that video. Check out the playlist link below for more like this. Subscribe for more and I'll see you very soon. Bye everyone.